Open and uh, we'll move now to AB 599, item number five. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. This is one of those bills that you, uh, where you say you learn something new every day. Yes. Uh, cytotechnologist didn't know they existed till I did this bill. How do you pronounce it again? Well, I hope it's cytotechnologist. Okay. I, I was, I was hoping you. Had, that, that was what I was going to learn today was how to pronounce it. So thank you. Um, it basically updates the scope of practice of our cytotechnologist to reflect the technology advances that have occurred since they were first licensed more than 20 years ago. It authorizes them to perform all tests and procedures procedures pertaining to cytology, not just those associated with microscope slides. Uh, they are professionals who work in laboratory settings. They're best known for examining gynecological tissue samples to identify cancer. Cytologists work under the direct on-site supervision of a laboratory director who is responsible for ensuring that all personnel have the proper competency, training, and experience to perform all testing. California has seen many detrimental effects for our outdated statute. Cytotechnologists are leaving the state to practice at a higher level in neighboring states. California is only one of a few states which prevent cytotechnologists from being able to perform modern diagnostic tests, including the HPV test. Another problem caused by our statute is that labs cannot find enough cytotechnologists and are shipping samples out of state for analysis. This results in high paying jobs being sent out of state. In addition, we cannot recoup any of the investment we make in students who train in California. Uh, AB 599 updates statute to allow cytotechnologists to perform tests with new technologies which are within their training, hopefully causing more cytotechnologists to stay in the state, less labs to uh, ship our spe specimens out of state, and also creating high skilled jobs. Today with me I have Matt uh, Riding, president of the California Association of Cytotechnologists, and Dr. Uh, Alfredo um, Sushian, yes. thank you very much, a pathologist and med medical director of Quest Diagnostics Laboratory here in Sacramento. Good, thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Riding. Um, I'm the president of the California Cytotechnologist Association of Cytotechnologists. You're going to make me do that. <laughs> um, I'm also a working cytotechnologist. I moved to California five years ago. Prior to that, I was a cytopathology supervisor at ARUP Laboratories, which is affiliated with the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. While I was there, I learned how to perform FISH testing. And FISH is an acronym for fluorescent in situ hybridization. It's a molecular test to detect genetic mutations that are associated with cancers. I convinced ARIP Laboratories that since they were performing FISH testing on the specifics, on the cytology samples, that we should bring it in-house to cytology. And they agreed with me, where I trained cytotechnologists to perform this test. Not all cytotechnologists only the ones who were willing to put in the time and the effort to learn and become proficient at it. I taught the students at the University of Utah fish, tech, fish testing. I presented the topic at national conferences, and yet the state of California says I'm not qualified, I'm not competent to perform that test. <clears throat> um, you know, ARIP Laboratories is one of the most reputable laboratories in the country, and right now as I'm speaking to you, they have cytotechnologists performing fish testing. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, Mayo Clinic has cytotechnologists performing fish testing and other molecular tests. This bill will not allow a cytotechnologist to perform a single test that they're not competent at. What this bill will do is allow a cytotechnologist to be competent at a broader range of tests so that they can fully test all of the samples, the samples that are already in their laboratory. The, the, the competency argument by the opposition is a non-argument. The reason it's a non-argument is because it's not real. It's not real because it's already the law of the land. It's already mandated by Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act that everybody has to be competent at whatever tests they're performing in the lab. In fact, CLIA mandates that all testing personnel that perform high-complexity high testing, and that's the testing we're talking about, must undergo proficiency examinations. If they don't pass, they don't get to perform it. So it, we're already competent. And I want to finish with saying this. I currently teach fish testing to the UCLA students, where sadly I have to tell them that if you want to perform this test, you have to leave the state of California. And let me tell you something, they are. The, the educational coordinator for, from Loma Linda University informed me last week that every one of her most recent graduates has left the state of California. This is a real problem and it needs to be fixed. Thank you for your time. Good. Thank you very much. Other in support?
Doctor. Hi, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. My name is Dr. Alfredo Asuncion. Uh, I am a pathologist and also the medical director for Quest Diagnostics here in Northern California. Uh, I am in support of this bill. I believe by expanding the roles that the saddle technologists can do uh, will benefit the state of California. Um, as a medical director, I am uh, mandated by CLIA to make sure that they are trained um, and they are competent in what they do, and we, we make sure of that. Uh, in the lab that I am medical director right now, I sign off on all training documents and competency uh, records. Um, so it's my opinion that uh, we will all benefit by expanding their role. And um, as a laboratory community and family, I think anything that we can do to help ourselves is a good thing. Very good. Thank you. Others in support. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, members, Bob Ackerman on behalf of the California Society of Pathologists. It's a collaborative effort between the pathology community and the set of technologists to update this terminology and statute, and we think it's for the betterment of patient care uh, and keeping jobs in California. So, ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Others in support. Uh, Michael Arnold with the California Clinical Laboratory Association. We have worked with the proponents of the bill. We believe it is properly drafted and we're in strong support. Uh, it's very difficult for clinical laboratories these days to find uh, cytotechnologists who are willing to work in California and we believe this will help in that effort. Very good. Thank you. Others in support? Those in opposition to the bill? Please come forward. Seeing no one, bring it back to the committee. Any questions? No. Nothing at all. Very good. We have a motion on the I'll bill. Move, move. Thank you, Senator Wykowski. And Assemblymember Assembly Member Bonilla, would you like to close? Um, thank you. Yes, um, there was the, the mention of one letter of opposition, and I thank the um, gentleman in his testimony for really clarifying the fact that that's really addressed in the fact that the standards already mandate that there be full training and that the um, laboratory directors oversee that training. There's also ongoing um, uh, professional development training that happens uh, on a required and mandated basis as well. So I think we really have adequately answered that one uh, issue that was raised, and I ask for your uh, I vote. Thank very you. Very good. Thank you very much. We do have a motion from Senator Wykowski. Do pass to Appropriations Committee. Please call the roll. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Bates. Aye. Bates, aye. Barry Hill. Block. Aye. Block, aye. Galgiani. Fernandez. Aye. Fernandez, aye. Jackson. Mendoza. Aye. Wykowski. Aye. Wykowski, aye. The bill has five votes. It uh, will hold the roll open for the absent members. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Bonilla. We'll move. No, I don't see Assemblymember. Assemblymember Ridley Thomas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. You're getting ahead of the game here. That's committee. good. Huh? You're getting ahead of the game here a little bit on the, on the those that uh, are here. Right, yeah, that's right. Well, well, well Senator well, Mr. Hernandez is in here. Well, I mean, Assemblymember Hernandez. Yes, well, Senator, any time I have an opportunity to present in front of you, I'm anxious to be there. <laughs> Please proceed. This is uh, item number 9, AB 1175. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senators, I am presenting AB 1175, which would provide for fiscal certainty with the uh, Bear Hefty, the Bureau of uh, Electronic and Appliance Repair Home Furnishings, and thermal insulation by allowing the uh, director of the department to raise fees that will help with the solvency of both funds, which uh, over the next two to three years become insolvent in our current uh, fund structure. Um, the, there have been several increases on the responsibilities of the department. Members of this committee will know related to labeling of appliances and the like and uh, green uh, green chemistry uh, activities, thus there are more resources needed uh, for its um, um, a work and application. With that, we have a testimony uh, from uh, the director of Bear Hefty, and uh, we would uh, strongly respectfully request an I vote. Very good. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in support. Hi, my name is Justin Paddock. I'm the chief of the bureau, uh, just here to answer any technical questions you may have. Very good. Thank you. Um, are there others in support of this measure? Seeing no one, witnesses in opposition. Bring it back to the committee. Are there questions or comments, concerns? I'd like to entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to raise the fees 25 percent. Allow the director to raise the fees 25 percent. A, a question in terms of the, the fee, what, what has been the 
the challenge? I mean, there's Breeze, the computer, is that one of the, some of the? No, sir, I'm in release three. Um, my Breeze costs are incredibly low at the moment. Um, essentially what's happened here is since the mid 90s for the home furnishing side and since the 70s for the electronic appliance repair side, we haven't had a statutory fee increase, and it's just overhead operating expenses, rents, um, salaries, et cetera. They've just gone up over time. And so for this reason, we're in currently a structural deficit, and we're trying to repair that. And the analysis speaks to uh, also reimbursable costs to the Department of Toxic mm -hmm. uh, Substance Control mm -hmm. and the like. So it's new, it's new encumbered responsibilities that exacerbate the funds in addition to the labeling requirements. And you, as you see in the analysis as well, the uh, industry trade associations are supportive. They realize it benefits when they have a department that can uh, effectively manage the regulatory scheme as well. Do the job. That's great. Very good. Thank you for that. And take that as your close. We have a motion from Indeed. Senator Thank Wykowski. Uh, those do pass to uh, Appropriations Committee. Please call the roll. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Bates? Barry Hill? Block? Aye. Block, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Jackson? Mendoza? Wykowski? Aye. Wykowski, aye. Bill has four votes. We'll hold the roll open for the absent members, and uh, I'm sure there will be problems. So very good. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Ridley Thomas. Assemblymember Steinorth, I see you there. We were under the wrong impression. I was as well. <laughs> good afternoon. This is item number 10, AB 1253. Please proceed. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Assembly Bill 1253 is an important consumer protection measure. Basically, what we're doing is trying to outline the guidelines for a retired optometrist license. Currently, optometrists have the ability to receive a retired designation so that they can perform optometry in um, examples of uh, community fairs or anywhere where they can reach out to the community and expand the coverage of the optometry field into those <laughs> environments. What we want to do is to be able to outline exactly what conditions and uh, circumstances that that would be applicable and also continuing education classes in that situation. I have with me um, Jennifer, Jessica Seiferman from the State Board of Optometry to answer any questions we have. Very good. Thank you. Hi, thank you for your time today. Um, I'm the acting executive officer for the Board of Optometry. Um, this bill, um, we do believe, is very important. Um, we believe the, the um, pathway to make sure that a retired to retired volunteer um, is, is clarified. Um, this essentially was found during Bree's configuration. We realized that there wasn't a set criteria for when retired, retired optometrists can become retired volunteer. So we wanted to ensure that those who want to volunteer their services meet um, the minimum standards and competency through examinations um, or continuing education. Very good, thank you. Um, are there witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Questions? Yes, Senator Hernandez. And what about the malpractice issue? Are they gonna be required to carry malpractice insurance? That I don't know. I don't I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. No, I believe um, it's minor. It's my impression that this bo this bill does not address That's that fair. specifically because it is strictly on a on a volunteer basis as a retired. But it is something I can follow up on absolutely. Which I think is admirable. But if somebody volunteers and they do a vision screening and they miss glaucoma or something, then they're going to get sued. And if they don't have malpractice insurance, they're really up the creek. So I would just you know I would assume it'd be upon them to purchase their own or have their own. So I'm just quite curious. Of course. Would that be something that would be provided by the, if they're volunteering their services to a nonprofit, the, the nonprofit may yeah, It could may fall under that, an umbrella policy. Uh, within that policy that they may have. So be, good question, though. Interesting. Point. Mm -hmm. good. And Thanks. then I understand there was um, a discussion of a, a potential amendment that may be proposed as far as um, the way it's currently established is it goes from a um, retired from an active mm -hmm. license and then to try and actually go from, if you say, haven't been practicing optometry for up to five years or up to three years, that you would have to then restart back to a full license. Um, this, this body, I believe, is looking at possibly amending it to where you could go from the retired to the retired active, which I believe is something we'd be very open to discuss. Very good. Look at that then. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion? To Thank you, Senator Hernandez. We have a motion. Would you like to close, Assemblyman? Well, I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you very much. The motion is 
do pass to the Appropriations Committee. Uh, please call the roll. Hill? Aye. Hill I Bates. Aye. Bates I Berryhill. Aye. Berryhill I Block. Aye. Block I Galgiani. Hernandez. Hernandez I Jackson. Mendoza. Bukowski. Aye. Bukowski I. Six. six. That bill has six votes. It, uh, it is out, but we'll uh, hold the roll open for absent members. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. I think that. Uh, who are we missing? Oh, that's right, Hernandez. We do have one bill to be heard. Item eight, Assembly Member eight o uh, AB eight o four, and Assembly Member Hernandez is on his way. So maybe we could call the other the absent members for the fund uh, call. Thank you. <coughs> Assembly Member Hernandez, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Assembly Bill 804 requires the Court Reporters Board of California to adopt regulations to establish continuing education requirements for renewal of shorthand reporter certification that are relevant to the practice of shorthand reporting. Further, AB 804 requires the Board to establish a procedure for approving providers for continuing education courses. In 2007, the Judicial Council adopted a continuing education requirement for all personnel employed by the court, including California shorthand recorders, CSRs, stating that continuing education is essential in enhancing fair, effective, and efficient administrative administration of justice. This rule requires that the CSR to complete eight hours of continuing education every two years. However, this requirement does not specifically require the continuing education course to be in the area that is relevant to the court employee's profession. AB 804 ensures that every CSR meets a continuing education minimum standard and that the verbatim record continues to be held to the highest standard possible. It is important to note that the California Court <coughs> Reporters Association, whose membership could be impacted, is sponsoring this bill. Uh, as the bill moves forward, I commit to working uh, with this committee and seeking clarification on all policies, issues raised by, in the analysis. Uh, with me here to testify in support of Assembly Bill 804 are Brooke Ryan, President, elect of the California Court Reporters Association, and Ignacio Hernandez of Hernandez Strategy. Very good. Thank you. Uh, would you like to speak in, uh, in support of the bill? Uh, Mr. Chair, members, thank you. Committee members, thank you. Uh, my name is Brooke Ryan. I'm the president-elect of the California Court Reporters Association. We are the largest state association in the nation. We represent uh, freelance reporters, official reporters, state hearing officers, and carton captioners. I've been a court reporter for 19 years. I've been an official in Sacramento Superior, Superior Court for 18 years. Um, uh, reporters in California operate both in courtroom and in civil private settings during depositions. We handle lawsuits and a wide array of state proceedings such as workers' compensation. Because we are often very quiet during court proceedings, the general public doesn't fully understand both the preparation and study required to be an effective court reporter. Each year, our association reaches out to our members to educate our membership about the many changes in rules of court and laws passed by the legislature and judicial council, and also the code of conduct and ethics um, passed by the uh, court reporters board. In addition to our professional responsibilities, we also must have a working knowledge of many laws in civil procedure, criminal procedure, as well as the latest in legal and technical and scientific terminology. CCRA publishes a compendium with more than three, 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 thousand, three dozen statutes to, facilit to facilitate the education of our profession. However, the time has come for a statewide continuing education requirement to ensure consistency throughout the profession. 22 other states already adopted a CE requirement. As a representative of the reporters in California, I ask for your support today. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Others in support? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, Ignacio Hernandez also here on behalf of CCRA simply to answer any technical questions and also to point out that the bill is supported by uh, a number of organizations, all of whom represent the actual reporters themselves. I know there's always a question of whether the profession is welcoming this type of res uh, responsibility. Uh, and you, as you can see with the support that uh, the, is widely supported amongst the reporters themselves. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Others in support? Are there witnesses in opposition? Seeing no one, bringing it back to the committee. Uh, questions? I, you know, I, and I appreciate your agreement, agreeing to take the amendments that we've talked about in appropriations or on the floor before. Yes. It back. So thank you for that. And is there a reason? I mean, is there anything different in this bill that we think will get to the governor that the governor will sign? It, yes. Mr. Chair, yes, Mr. Chair, if I may, thank you. Uh, we. Obviously, because there are no organizational uh, opponents to the bill, uh, we have certainly reached out to key individuals in the administration and begun those discussions to try to identify um, you know, a way to get this bill uh, signed. And so we're still having those conversations. Uh, we imagine when we take the amendments going forward that this committee is recommended, we're hoping that it will be uh, a little bit better and closer to, to what uh, the governor and the administration would be open to. So we're working on that right now. Uh, and we, you know, intend to move it forward only when we feel fairly confident that it will be signed. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, is there a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Motion by... I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Senator just, Bates, my um, apologies. I, I don't have any information on the amendments that are proposed. I guess they weren't in the analysis according to... Well, there were we policy have. issues raised in the analysis. Yeah. And yeah. I think... Yeah. Is that the, the ones that we're referring to? Do we have those? Is that it, Mark? Do you, you have that in, on page uh, five of six in the analysis? No. It's just amendments to be taken in appropriations or on the floor that in, to deal with the issues. And if they're not resolved, then we would certainly reserve the right to bring the bill back to the committee for review. Uh, you've raised those concerns, and you have my commitment to work on addressing those issues. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a motion by Senator Block. Um, would you like to close? Uh, I respectfully so. ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. This is due pass to Appropriations Committee. Uh, motion by Senator Block. Please call the roll. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Bates? No. Bill Bates, no. Barry Hill? No. Barry Hill, no. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Jackson? Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Wachowski? Aye. Wachowski, aye. Six to two. Six to two. It, it does have enough, but we'll hold, uh, we'll hold the roll open for a little while for you to do the vote. Thank you very much, Senator Appreciate Hernandez. It. So that does conclude our bills today. We will uh, call the roll for those absent members and the, the items that are on, on call. Item number one, thank you, thank you, Senator Wachowski. Item number one, AB 161, please call the absent members. Uh, item one. <coughs> we'll start at the top. <coughs> item number one, AB 161, 7 0. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. 9 0. Nine zero. That bill is out. Item number two, AB 296, please call the absent members. Motion is due passed to appropriations. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. 9 0. Uh, that bill is out as well. Item number 3, AB 345. Please call the absent members. That motion is due pass to appropriations. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Bill has nine votes, uh, and that bill is out as well. Um, we'll move to item number 4, AB 486. Uh, please call the absent members. Motion is due pass to appropriations. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. It's 9 0. 9 0. That bill is out as well. Item number 5, AB 599. Please call the absent members. Uh, motion is due pass to appropriations. Berry Hill? Aye. Berry Hill, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. 9 0. 9 0. Uh, that bill is out as well. Uh, we'll uh, call the con the consent calendar, which was item number six, item number seven, and item number eleven. Barry Hill. Aye. Barry Hill. Aye. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza. Aye. 
Nine. That bill has nine. The, the consent calendar has nine votes. So that those bills are out. Item number eight, AB eight zero four. Please call the absent member. Uh, Jackson. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Seven to two. So that bill has seven to two, uh, and it is out. Uh, item number nine, AB eleven seventy five. Uh, please call the absent members. Bates. Berryhill. Galdiani. Jackson. Mendoza. Aye. Jackson, aye. Jackson, aye. Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, aye. Six. That's six. six. That bill has six votes and uh, it is out. Uh, we'll move to item number 10, our final bill, uh, AB 1253. Uh, please call the absent members. Uh, Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, aye. Jackson. Aye. Jackson, aye. Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, aye. Nine zero. Nine zero. Uh, uh, on that bill, and it is out. Uh, that concludes the business of the uh, today's Business and Professions and Economic Development hearing. Uh, we are adjourned. Perfect timing.